While Street Fighter was the first video game movie adaptation to be financially successful, it didn't exactly make fans of the series very happy. Mortal Kombat, on the other hand, was the first video game movie adaptation that not only was financially successful, but a major hit with fans, proving to Hollywood that yes, video game adaptations were a viable commodity. Mortal Kombat is a 1995 martial arts action video game adaptation from director Paul W.S. Anderson. The movie opens with one of the most awesome opening theme songs ever. How can you listen to this and not want to go kick some ass? Anyway, we cut to a young warrior fighting an evil sorcerer named Shang Tsung. Alright, this movie isn't messing around. Less than two minutes into the film and we see a kid getting his back broken. This was all part of martial arts master Liu Kang's nightmare. Either that or he just realized that one day all that wonderful hair will be gone. He gets a telegraph proving that his nightmare was real. Good grief, really grandfather? Brother dead, return home. It's kinda terse, don't you think? He could have at least put a sorry about that in there. Over in Hong Kong, Special Agents Sonya and Jax are infiltrating a nightclub looking for crime boss Kano. Exactly how much ecstasy is this crowd on? Shotgun blasts, machine gun fire directly into the crowd, and no one cares. In Los Angeles, Johnny Cage walks into a hangar and beats up a bunch of guys. It turns out it's all just for a movie. Johnny meets up with his old sensei who tells him about the Mortal Kombat tournament. Since everyone thinks that Johnny's a fraud, he enters the tournament to prove that he can fight. Liu Kang made it back home to the Temple of Light in China. Ah uh, no, angry birds made their way into Mortal Kombat? You'd think these guys would have something else to do rather than stand around all day waiting for Liu Kang to return. So Liu's talking to the village elders, and what are they all grabbing at? Liu's grandfather tells him that his brother died in the Mortal Kombat tournament. Liu is supposed to be the chosen one, but his brother fought in his place. Now he wants to fight in the tournament to avenge his brother. The Thunder God Raiden shows up, but Liu doesn't believe him, so Raiden gives him an electric flip. In Hong Kong, the combatants are waiting for a boat to take them to the tournament. Sonya isn't there for the tournament, she's tracking Kano. A giant Scooby-Doo ghost ship shows up and everybody gets on board. Sonya sees Kano and chases after him. Um, the boat is clearly pulling away and she's running towards it. How does she get on board? Sonya, Johnny Cage, and Liu Kang investigate the boat and find Shang Tsung, Scorpion, and Sub-Zero. Before they can fight, Raiden shows up to stop them. Although he can't seem to stop Shang Tsung from being a creep. You've been chosen, Sonya. Much to my delight. Raiden explains the tournament to the group. In order for Shang Tsung to take over the Earth, he has to win ten Mortal Kombat tournaments. So far, he's won nine. One of these three will be the one to stop him. Could it be A, the actor, B, the special forces agent, or C, the chosen one? Shang Tsung gets to the front of the boat to announce, Everybody have fun tonight. Everybody Shang Tsung tonight. So, all your favorite characters from the game make it to the island for the tournament. Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, Sonya Blade, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, and Art Lean? Well, I guess we know who the red shirt is. On the island, they see Princess Katana. When a woman looks at you like that, it usually means something. Yeah. It means stop looking at me. Shang Tsung tells this good for 1995 CGI effect to keep the humans away from her. You know, for a giant island of death, they have an exquisite cafeteria. Shang Tsung shows up with a bunch of henchmen that proceed to dump the food all over the place. Now what was the point of that? Here, have all this great food. No, watch this fight instead. Couldn't they have just waited an hour? Okay, so the henchmen cleaned and mopped the floor too? They are very handy. One of the thugs has to fight Sub-Zero. Noob. Kano's eating all the food that was dumped on the floor while chatting with the four-armed giant Goro. Liu, Johnny, and Sonya follow Shang Tsung but find Kano. That's Kano. She isn't very good at being stealthy. Shang Tsung is a great sorcerer. Those who challenge his power become his slaves. Yeah? Well, I haven't seen any of them around. You haven't seen any around? Perhaps you missed the 50 guys all wearing the same outfit. Shang Tsung shows up and now he has an accent all of a sudden. Why else would I have chosen such a disreputable looking cream? Shang Tsung warns Goro about Princess Katana. Princess Katana is 10,000 years old and the rightful heir to the throne of Outworld. But she must not be allowed to join with the forces from the realm of Earth, especially Liu Kang. The group heads off and sees Katana. Come on, she's trying to lead us out. Oh, would you forget about her? She's 10,000 years old. So what? 
That's all right. That just makes her an epic cougar. Do you know where we're going? I know exactly where we're going. Katana went this way. Katana went this way? Did she just warp herself through all these cobwebs? They find themselves back in Goro's room and get into a sweet-ass brawl with a bunch of Shang Tsung's henchmen. More bad guys show up, but Raiden scares them off. Okay, which of these guys is right, said Fred? The first day of the tournament and Liu Kang fights Lion Guy. <laughs> Liu Kang beats him and Shang Tsung absorbs his soul. Sonya gets into her first fight with Kano. Where did she get the shorts from? I don't remember her bringing any luggage. She gets Kano into a leg lock and kills him. Johnny Cage finds Scorpion and they fight it out. Scorpion warps him into this weird crypt location. Welcome. What is he welcoming him to? Welcome to die. Scorpion botches his fatality and Johnny Cage cuts him open. Liu Kang has to fight Katana, but all she does is hug him and tell him about the tournament. Sexuality. Shang Tsung gets mad and calls off the fight. Liu Kang now has to fight Sub-Zero. When Liu starts to get the better of him, Sub-Zero uses his freeze ability. Liu Kang then impales him with an ice spike. You'd think Shang Tsung would want to be around for these bigger fights. Now it's time for the death metal sensation of Goro! <laughs> Goro fights Artlene and easily beats him. No! Guy we just met yesterday! Now she has pants again? So basically that whole scene was designed so we'd get a good look at her legs while she killed Kano. Why am I complaining about this? Johnny Cage fights Goro and punches him right in the store. He then lures him to a cliff and kicks him off. Shang Tsung kidnaps Sonya and takes her to a place called Outworld. Liu Kang and Johnny Cage go after him. In Outworld, Reptile follows them. Liu Kang flings him into a gargoyle and it turns into a ninja. Who said that? Liu beats him, which turns him into a pile of bugs, and then Liu makes silly sounds. <laughs> now that Reptile's dead, Katana can join Liu Kang. She tells him about the three challenges he has to overcome. Over in the Black Temple, we see Sonya is ready to film her White Snake video. Liu Kang challenges Shang Tsung to Mortal Kombat. After a brief fight, Shang Tsung summons some of the souls he had under his control, and Liu has to fight them. The second challenge is face yourself. He must have hit the easy button, because he does it in like 10 seconds. You can look into my soul, but you don't own it. <laughs> the third challenge is to face his worst fear, which is that he's responsible for his brother's death. For being a super evil, all-powerful sorcerer, he kind of sucks at this. Raiden sent me to help you. You're not really Chan. Now that Liu Kang knows he's the chosen one, he beats the hell out of Shang Tsung and knocks him into the floor spikes, which frees all the captured souls. Liu Kang's brother admits to being a dumbass and thanks him for freeing his soul. One day, we will be reunited. And it will feel so good. The group returns to the Temple of Light to meet Raiden. <laughs> What is it? The Cookie Monster! You weak, pathetic fools! I've come for your souls! The Emperor now challenges them, and boom! Cliffhanger! See what happens in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. On second thought, don't. The movie was filmed mostly in Thailand and Los Angeles for about $18 million. The studio wanted to do this as authentic as the game, so they brought in some kids from a local arcade to check out the character designs. Originally, Kano didn't have his faceplate, but the kids threw a fit because he needed the plate to look like he did in the game. So, surprisingly, they fixed it. Kind of amazed and happy that they went this extra step. Most studios would have just said, screw it. It's very cool that they wanted this to appeal to the fans as well as mainstream audiences. The Temple of Light is a real temple in Thailand. The boat scene was shot in Long Beach, California. The ghost ship was CGI, and in this scene, both the island and the boats were digital. 
very impressive for 1995, and it still looks good now. The scene in the beginning of the movie where Johnny Cage is talking to the director, the director looks a whole lot like Steven Spielberg. While there was a rumor that Spielberg originally wanted to be in the film but couldn't because of scheduling conflicts, the producers denied that and put this guy in the movie because he was funny and because he kind of looked like Spielberg. Since this movie was released right around Mortal Kombat 3, the designer snuck this secret code in the movie to see if anyone would notice. The statues in the film were really carved out of foam and then painted. The movie incorporated many elements from both Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 into it, and it's still one of the most authentic video game adaptations. Things like the monks and the pit traps. The special moves are there, like Johnny Cage's shadow kick, Liu Kang's fireball, and Sonya's leg grab. I also like that they snuck in a friendship move. They had many characters from the games, although I thought it was odd to create one for the movie just to kill him. Why didn't they just have Jax go with Sonya and then have him be the one that gets killed by Goro? While they dialed back the fatalities, it was a PG-13 film after all. It was still a very violent movie. They pushed it about as far as they could, and while I would have liked for them to go all out and make it R-rated, it didn't ruin the movie. The movie was so good otherwise, it really didn't bother me. Robin Sho is a Wushu world champion, and he even choreographed some of the fights. The Scorpion Johnny Cage one, and the Liu Kang Reptile one. The Scorpion Johnny Cage fight was so complicated, it took 10 days and multiple stuntmen to shoot. The gigantic Goro was actually a massive puppet that was controlled in three sections. There was a guy inside to walk, another that controlled the arms, and a third that controlled the head via remote. As is with something this complicated, it broke a lot, but the end result was worth it because he still looks amazing. While the movie was ahead of its time with its visual effects, if Goro looked as bad as Reptile did, he wouldn't have been nearly as effective. The Johnny Cage Goro fight on the cliff is entirely digital. For a lot of the interiors, they had three airport hangar sized sound stages in Los Angeles. The character of Raiden was based on Lightning, the third storm of Lopan from Big Trouble in Little China. While it was odd to have Christopher Lambert playing the part of Raiden, considering that Raiden in the game is Chinese, he did an excellent job. He was actually their top choice for the role. Originally, the studio signed Brandon Lee, but unfortunately, he died on the set of The Crow. They then wanted Jean-Claude Van Damme, but he turned it down so he could do Street Fighter. They brought in Ashby, who was very good in the role, and then they wasted him in the sequel. Originally, Cameron Diaz was up for the part of Sonya, but she broke her wrist shortly before filming, so they brought in Bridget Wilson as a replacement. Ed Boon, the co-creator of Mortal Kombat, was the voice of Scorpion in the movie. Jason Scott Lee, Russell Wong, Dustin Nguyen, and Philip Ree all auditioned for the role of Liu Kang, but it went to Robin Shu. Veteran actor Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa was the perfect choice to play Shang Tsung. He was great at being just the right amount of over-the-top with a mixture of wicked charisma. Shang Tsung's henchmen were originally supposed to be Tardican warriors like Baraka. Unfortunately, this would have driven them way over budget, so they opted to just have them look like masked bad guys. The script was more serious, so the actors ad-libbed most of the humor. Especially Christopher Lambert, who definitely had the funniest line of the movie. The fate of billions will depend upon you. <laughs> Outworld was filmed in and around a destroyed steel mill in Los Angeles. This was the same steel mill for the climactic end sequence of Terminator 2. Director Paul W.S. Anderson's no stranger to video game movies. After Mortal Kombat, he helmed the Resident Evil series, and so far he's done three of them. While I know some people bitch about the Resident Evil series, I think he's one of the few directors that understands how to make a video game movie properly. Maybe if they would have brought him back for Mortal Kombat Annihilation, it might have been a good movie. Mortal Kombat is awesome. How awesome? Even Gene Siskel from Siskel and Ebert liked it. A lot of effort went into this production. I've never played the video game Mortal Kombat, but after seeing this movie, I'm actually attempted. A lot of fun. Although old curmudgeon Ebert liked it, but he refused to admit it, and then went on to complain that the theater was too dark. You know, I can't uh, really give a thumbs up, although I'm you right. Should. I'm right in the middle on it. One thing. Weren't you I surprised by the quality? It, you, you, you know, no. the one thing that bothered me was it was so dark. I wonder if the, if the theater was trying to Where? save money on electricity. Mortal Kombat is a video game adaptation a lot of game movies should strive to be like. It incorporated many elements from the game, but mixed it up enough so it wasn't an exact rehash. The effects were great, the fights were amazing, and the story, well, essentially Enter the Dragon with superpowers, worked very well. This is the movie a lot of fans thought the Street Fighter movie should have been like, and even though I'm a fan of the Street Fighter movie, there is a part of me that agrees.